Hi there, welcome back to Benina Club. Now you would have got your latest notes which told you about a dress called the Linda dress. Now the Linda dress is a free pattern from Benina. You can go onto the Benina blog and download the Linda dress and it's for the month of April only. So if you missed out on that, you can go to the Benina blog, you can click on it and you can pay $5 US to get the pattern. So the Linda dress is this dress here that I've made here and it's um, got lovely side pockets, a lovely full sleeve and a v-neck. Now when I made that I thought I'm never going to wear a v-neck and it actually looks really really nice on but the pocket for the Linda dress is very very tiny and by the way the pockets are up a little bit high so I'm low lowering them down about two inches they're just a little bit too high it's not comfortable putting your hand in your pocket so on the Benina blog it tells you you can download another pocket to use for this dress or any other dress or skirt and it's done by Hannah Rose Smith and it's a really really good pocket but this pocket comes with an inseam pocket so what that means is we're going to do the main fabric out of this color the main fabric out of this color and then we're going to do the lining out of a lightweight it's just pocketing really it's just um cotton 100% cotton lighter weight fabric and we are going to interface our pocket facing with the muslin interfacing now you hear me talking about this a lot because it is a beautiful interfacing that is lightweight but it's fusible so I really really like it. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut a pocket out of this fabric and I'm going to cut a pocket out of my main fabric. So I want to have right side to right side, right side to right side and if you can't tell Usually you can tell by the salvage because there's a row of holes or double row of holes and when you turn it over it will be rough on one side and smooth on the other so the smooth side's the right side and obviously you can tell the right and wrong side of your linen. So I'm making these all out of linen today and these are the beautiful linens from Pauline Longley from Philosophy Art, our Taringa designer that um, does all the beautiful artwork and we choose the fabrics and we get them made for us. So I am going to check, here's my pocket I've already done and I want the back pocket to be out of this and the front pocket is going to be out of here. So this pocket is going to be going, oh not on that dress, oh this is just a sample. <laughs> I was going to say that's got two pockets already so I could just cut these out of here happily because this is just a sample to show you. Now interesting enough this dress has got very very full sleeves so if you have a look here you can see it's got very very gathered sleeves and when I had a look on the pattern it did not look as if it had a very full sleeve but it's actually quite pretty but I'm going to show you a, how to gather them on to get them right, but B, how you can change it and take the fullness out of your sleeve. You don't need to have a very full sleeve. You can change it and make it your own, but I would use this pocket because the smaller pocket you can't hardly even get your hands in. It's really only for looks. So just pin this on here or use your weights. And this here, this one is going to be the fabric and it's going to go on to this one so I need the fabric facing up the right way because it's going to be stitched onto here so that's going to go onto there and then on the back of the fabric it's going to have this so I would lie this down because I know that's the way it needs to go and I'll be cutting this out of here so everything will be up the right way so check this iron on part is going to be going on the underside of the fabric I put it on here so I can see where to cut and my fabric's on the right side. So when you're cutting it out, get your grain line all perfect and pin this one on and pin this one on. I do use the overlocker 
and the sewing machine for this garment but I'll show you that as well so now we're just going to cut along here and they have 1.5 seam allowances so remember I showed you the lovely trouser um, side pocket well this is a really good one for skirts and dresses also when you go onto the Benina blog and put Linda dress on as you're scrolling down you'll see a really lovely skirt and it's made you could make it out of a rayon and they put the same pocket in and you don't need a pattern you can just draw the pattern pieces so you know there's some really nice free patterns on the Benina blog and every month Benina do a free pattern for you anyway but you know paying five dollars for a pattern if you've missed out is not really a big deal so um, either way they're very good patterns all of the patterns that are free are from some of the older Benina Club magazines. So some of you might even have the magazine anyway. So this one I'm going to cut out and this is my facing. So what this means is it just, you're not going to have such a thick pocket, which is really, really, really good. And you've got this nice little facing so that it keeps it nice and light because you don't want a big heavy pocket on your side seam so I've got my grey one ready to go in there with the grey dress and this is just a sample to show you how to cut it and fuse it and get it ready so I'll take my pins out here keep that because you can use that on any garment this is the side that I'm going to stick down so I'm going to pop it under here and I'm going to give that a fuse so I'm just using my little iron here and when you're doing this just to make sure that you don't stick it to your iron, put your pressing sheet over and just iron it on here. Now, if that was sticky, it would stick to the sheet and I can just pull it off. So it's very, very good. So I'm just giving that a little press. And there it is there. Okay. So now what I do on my overlocker is I'm just going to clean finish this edge. So all I'm going to do is just overlock around that edge and you only need three threads so I'm not using the fourth thread on here I've taken the needle out and I'm only using three threads so all I'm doing is neatening now if you're going to do this on your sewing machine you could use your single overlock stitch so that's all I've done is I've just done a three thread bit of fluff and just neaten that edge okay now the next step is to put your facing onto your pocket and you're just going to stitch around that to hold it. Now this can just be a straight stitch, nothing fancy, it's just to hold it onto the work. But obviously you can't overlock that because it'll cut it. So all I'm going to do is straight stitch around the edge just to hold it. And I've got the hover on so it lifts up my foot. One more stitch. That's it. You don't really need to pin it. It's just holding it on. around the corner very easy okay Oop. right so there's my one pocket and there's my other pocket now I'm not going to use those that's just to show you how you do that now what I'm going to do is pop that over there pop that over there and show you the pocket so this is the one I'm going to use and there's my pocket that's going to go together with it. So the dress I have got here. And I want to just to show you about the darts. I've shown you before, but seeing as I'm doing it, I might as well show you again. So when you're pinning your darts, I always cut where my darts are going to meet. So I put the right sides together. And I've previously marked the end of my dart and what I do everyone does them a little bit differently is I make sure I've got a tail of fabric uh, thread sorry 
and you can just start here and you just go on to your fabric, don't back stitch, and just go all the way to the other end of your dart. So this is just one of many methods. And I think I've shown you before, you can just, oh, I've lost my other end. Okay, that's knotted itself. That's good, I don't need to do anything. So normally I would tie the two together, but it's fine, it's done. Now, with your dart, you're going to press that downwards. So I do that now, so that it's all prepared for when I sew the side seam. So it's all pressed down. I've put a mark where my pocket is going to go. Now, I have chosen to put my pocket with my, um, my main fabric on the front and my pocket with my lining, if I hold that open, at the back. Okay, so this being the front of my garment, I'm going to lay it down here and I put a pin where my pocket's going to go and it's going to be stitched from there to there. So I will change my pin to there and if I want to, I can use clips as well, whichever works for you. I like clips, they're a little bit easier. Now, obviously, this being the hem, which I've previously overlocked, and this being my other part of my garment, I need to make sure, oh, see my pins popped out. I need to make sure that I put my other pin in exactly the same place so that my pockets meet. Just get another pin. So make sure, just put your pin through twice, it won't go. So that when you sew your pockets, it's going to meet. So just fold this back and lay your pocket right side down. Okay, and then you can see that it's in exactly the right place. And when they are right sides together, that's going to look like that. And that one's going to look like that. So it's very, very easy. So just put your pin through there. Or your clips, whichever you may be using. I'll show you how to make one of these shortly. Clip and clip. Okay, put that over there. Right. Now, so we are going to stitch this. Now I've got my ordinary foot on. Um, just my, I've got my 1D foot on. And I'm just going to do, remember, we've got a 1.5 centimetre seam. I'm going to run my foot along the edge. Now, this foot is, from the needle to the side, about 1.1 centimetre. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just going to run along the edge and I'm just going to stitch this down. That's all I need to do. I'm going to do the same to the other side. But before I do, I'm going to press that open. Now what you can do is you can top stitch this if you want to. I've chosen not to. The linen sits beautifully and I really don't need to. So I'm just going to press my seam towards this side here. And if you want to at this stage, you can overlock this whole seam. It's quite a good idea to do it now because then you're not trying to go around curves later. So I might just three thread that overlocked. It's such a simple, simple dress to make that you will love it. It's very easy. And you can change it to suit you. You can put a little tie belt on it if you don't want it loose. You can put a bit of elastic in the back, whatever you want. So just clean finish your side seam. Nothing like an overlocker. So now I have my seam all done and I'm going to press my seam inwards. Okay, so just give it a press. Right, now I'm going to sew my other pocket on, my other side of my pocket, and overlock the same. So I've chosen not to top stitch, but you certainly can if you like. Yeah.
don't really even need to back stitch because everything's going to be restitched. And you don't need to leave an allowance, you just, just sew. Let's not make life hard. Okay, always wait for your foot to lift up before you pull your fabric away when you're using your cutter. And then I'm going to overlock down the side here. This makes it very quick. Press my seam away again so that both my seams are pressed before I do the next step. With overlockers, make sure you've got your fabric out of the road so that it does not catch underneath. And there I have my other pocket, so I'll just give that a quick press. Okay. Now here's the crazy easy part. We just put, I'll stand up so you can see it. Just put your right sides together. Pin or clip, whatever you prefer. I think clips are quicker and easier and you don't hurt your fingers. And all the way up to the top. And the reason why I like to do my seams like this is because I like to press my seams open so everything's nice and flat, especially with a woven fabric. So this is why I do my seams like this. I just find it so quick and easy. And one more clip there will do. Now, when you come to your pocket, you can just put a couple of clips just to hold it. If that pocket's a little bit bigger, it makes no difference because it's all going to be cut off in a minute. I might have just not been a bit generous with my cutting. And go to there and then here I like to put a pin so I make sure I get it in the right place and I'm going to do my 1.5 seam so it's going to put make my pocket disappear into the side of my garment. Right now the 1.5 seam on your machine as long as you've got your needle position to the center the 1.5 seam I'll show you is right here so at the back it says 1.5 and at the front it says 5 8 so it's got inches or centimeters but it's exactly 1.5 away from your needle so you definitely want to do the right seam allowance so that this ends up perfect on your pocket now i'm starting from the bottom of my garment and i have overlocked my garment so i want to make sure when i start that my hem is perfectly straight so I don't have to worry about having to straighten off my hem afterwards so I like to make sure that that's perfect to start off with so when I'm doing that I will start and I'll put it on my 1.5 but I won't start right from the edge I'll start in a little bit and I'll stitch a couple of stitches and I'll go back to the beginning and then I start sewing okay that's how I do them always have probably always will and now I'm on my 1.5 seam. Needle down, as you can see, is great because when I want to move my fabric around, the needle's in the work. It's so good. It's so easy. There are reasons why a new machine, with all these little features, does make life a little bit easier. So these little clip holders are a little bit of fun. I decided I needed to have my um, clips on a little pin cushion holder and that's what I designed and then at the top you can see I put a little pin cushion then I've used the banana fabric so I'll show you how you can make this and then the challenge is for you to make your own design I'm I'm thinking about a hedgehog it may be coming anytime soon but I'm thinking of making a hedgehog because I think it'll look absolutely gorgeous so yeah and I have put wool stuffing inside here so my um, pins won't go blunt but one thing is in the back here next time I would put a bit of plastic or something so that my pins long pins don't go all the through to the back and prick me 
so I just put them in gently but yeah it's a little bit of fun the sewing room at the top there that was on the side of the fabric so I just applied on and then I bound it in some sewing fabric so yeah fun right back to this so 1.5 seam now when I get up to my pin here I'm going to pivot and go around my pocket so up to here straight up stop at my pin one two more and it will hover and I'll turn and it should be and it is exactly on the 1.5 now when you're doing this just go slow round your corners and go all the way around if you need to stop and turn stop and turn because your machine will hover and you can just turn so you get a nice curve no one is going to see the inside of this anyway because it's inside your pocket and we're not going to overlock it now I really think sometimes you can over overlock things on something like this I would use my pinking shears so that I don't have bulk inside my dress because it's only a light linen so I want to make sure that it is not too bulky so all the way to here and you'll notice if I show you I'm just going to put a pin and show you here this is where I'm sewing so when you see the pocket it will be set into the seam it's very clever because this is your sewing seam and this is your pocket seam it's very clever it's very good actually i think it's a great pocket so just come around and do exactly the same at the top here go five uh five eighths or 1.5 centimeter past and then turn you can mark it if you like and if you turn Oh no, it's perfect. If you turn and it's not quite there, do one more stitch. Okay, and all the way to the top. And that's how hard it is to do your side seam with your pocket insert. It's very, very easy. Such a quick, quick dress to make. And then when you get to the top, I'll just cut that thread. Um, I'm just going to ask the cameraman to pass me something. Can I please have that, um, that gingham sort of looking roll to the left that I'd iron on? That, no, that big thing to the left. Up the top. Just... <laughs> no no that gingham gingham the gingham fabric the gingham fabric yes that 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 no no you had your hat on it yes and the other one beside it excellent I must teach him what gingham is sorry this these are um, sleeve and ham rolls and I'm going to use this one so I can lie my fabric into here so I don't have to go over to the iron now what I do as here's my seam so I'm going to cut down to there so that I can open my seam out and now I can bring my iron over here and I can press my seam open isn't that brilliant so good and then I do the same at the other end so this pops down here it's not gingham anyway is it it's plaid my apologies see that's why I didn't know it's a plaid fabric so make sure you don't cut your garment and then open this out and iron your seam so I use these all the time it's just so much quicker and easier when you are sewing to have them because you can lift them and put them anywhere now around my pocket like I said I do not use my overlocker I pink so I get my pinking shears pinking shears are wonderful like alligators teeth and I just simply get my fabric and I just cut a little bit at a time not too much don't try and do a big cut and normally not up in the ear like this but this is just to show you and I pink all the way around my pocket 
and that will stop it fraying but also it stops all the bulk of having overlocking on the inside so yeah it's just so much nicer now if I decided that these dresses needed a lining I would use this fine cotton lawn type fabric to line it in so it was very light because the idea of wearing your linen is so that it breathes and it's nice and cottony so don't go lining your dress with a nylon slip so make yourself a cotton slip now when you do that you need to cut it on the bias so that it stretches it's got a bit of stretch inside your garment now there's my sleeve a uh, sleeve there's my pocket on the inside there's my other side and when I open it out to the right side you can see I'll put it on to this one that's why these are so handy you can see that your pocket naturally just falls perfectly and then you can just give that a little press and you've got a lovely enclosed seam pocket that you can hardly see. And that's it. So you don't, unlike the trousers, you don't stitch your pocket on to your dress, you leave it loose. And it's just such a nice, look at that, such a nice fit. And the, the light fabric is way in there, you're never going to see it. So that is how you do the beautiful pocket and it is pretty much invisible. I think they are brilliant. Now the next step I do, so I do those first and then the next step I do is my shoulder seams. Now the shoulder seams are 1.5 seam. So I'm going to overlock both sides, then I'm going to sew them together and press my seams open and, and show you how to sew your sleeve in. So we're going to overlock, that's one, overlock the second one, and right side to right side, and you're doing a 1.5 seam and pressing it open, so your iron, your overlocker, your sewing machine are your best friends today. You need to make sure that you have everything set ready to go. And as you can see, I'm using white thread. It's absolutely fine for doing this. I don't need to worry about um, any other color. And I'm using cream thread on top because I'm not top stitching. The only time I would use the exact color is when I'm top stitching. So again, if you're worried about a soft fabric, just start in and go backwards and go forwards. and cut when you cut wait for your machine to stop and lift your foot up now I will put this back under here just like that and press my seam open so it's all about pressing and ironing to make it perfect and that's all done right so as I said the sleeve is very, very full, and I decided, it's fuller than this, I decided that I would make the sleeve less full, so I took out some pleats, and I have just made a very narrow little sleeve for this particular dress. So when you're doing this, you still need to run some gathering stitches around here, and then normally from this notch, to this notch that you can hardly see about there and when you do this I'll do it from the wrong side so you can see you need your bobbin thread to the top so do one stitch down one stitch back up lift your foot and bring your bobbin thread because you need both your threads to the top to do this because you're going to gather them so now I'm going to go from here and I'm going to run my foot along the edge and I'm going to lengthen my stitch length right out to about five because I want a nice, oh that's a bit far, I want a nice long stitch. Okay, so my foot's just running along the edge, my threads are both up, so I've got a tail and you can see I'm running a very long stitch all the way around 
and all the way to my other mark and I'm not going to use my cutter so I want my needle up my foot up and I want a tail so you do not use your cutter so there's oh you can see it better on here there's my first row actually see it better on the right side so this time I'm doing my next row but I am going to run it on the inside of that um, line so I've got two rows close together and keep them even remember don't use your cutter needle foot lift and leave a tail okay important so this time I'm going to overlock my side seam and you'll notice I've done a little cut out at the bottom the reason for this when I press my seam back I want to make sure that my seam sits nice and flat I could probably do it a bit less than that my seam sits nice and flat if I'd done it straight across when I fold it up it would have ended down here so you always add a little bit of seam a little bit of fabric I could cut a little bit my hem's going to be like there doesn't need to be quite that much Oops. because I just made the length of the seam up I'm going to just trim a little bit off and just show you so it needs to be just a little bit if I go like that so when it folds back and you seam it it's going to sit in that seam because otherwise it would sit like that and you can't catch that in the seam so you've got to do a little tiny bit of a cut out when you're doing a hem so I'm going to overlock across the bottom first then I'm going to overlock up the sides and I'll make this one exactly the same that one needs to be a little bit less I was exaggerating I think showing you in class so now I'm going to overlock the hem so you're all prepared so that when you're finished putting the sleeve in you can just hem them you can put elastic in it or you can leave it plain so single overlock sew down and then I'm going to overlock up the sides and sew them so just down and up that little tiny bit of a tag and I don't take the overlocker off I just I just keep on going make sure you don't get your seams uh, your um, thread ends in all the way down to the bottom and overlock out to that side there we are. oh I forgot to put my catcher on so I'm going to do that and now I will just cut my overlocking here and here and I'm going to pop that on my lap so you don't have to look at it pop those over there so I will just show you this one I made actually and it's quite hard to get it really 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 tight but it's still absolutely fine and it's brilliant and I use it for all my shoulders and everything like that and hand stitch this bit closed here when you purchase them like this they are hard as a rock and this has a little drawstring cover cover on it and this was from june taylor from oh i don't know how many years ago but it's made in the usa and it's it is like that would do some serious damage that's that one there it's really hard but you can make them yourself you don't have to go and buy them so right side oh not right side right right side to right side there so now i'm going to sew that seam there so I'm going to do 1.5 just need to tr oh, clear it remember because you're on long stitch clear it I just have to trim that top off it's not matching perfectly that's easy enough all the way down to the end Just get your side seams together. You can clip, clip or pin it. You really don't need to. It's only the inside of a hem. And I have made this hem a lot narrower. The sleeves are very, very full. I haven't finished this one. I'll finish this one. The sleeves are very, very full. Like this, because it's a very full sleeve. And I've made it very narrow. So my sleeve now, if you have a look on here, is extremely narrow so I've made some with full sleeves and some with narrow sleeves 
and I've made this three quarter length, not full length. So you could just suit yourself, it really doesn't matter. There are no rules, it's your own rules. Cut. Sleeve. So this time, oh, oh I cut it didn't work. Oh yes it did. So this time I'm putting this through my sleeve, like this. And I will just press this. And the other thing is it's so much easier to do all this before you've finished your garment. So everything is so much easier by using these. Isn't it a beautiful fabric? We have this in a few colours. And press that one. Right, now I'll show you how to put it into your garment. So when you're doing your pattern, you will always see that it has a notch at the top. That is your shoulder seam. So when you're putting it on, that's the top. And you can see it's a little bit of a different shape. So the front and the back. Okay. And when you're putting it in, you just match the notches. So you don't have to worry which is the front and which is the back and why is it not working. It just works. So now on my garment... I'll just turn this all back through to the wrong side. I have got, yeah, fantastic notches. Don't know where they went. Brilliant notches. You line up your notches, uh, people. Uh, mine have disappeared, probably because I've made how many garments or half garments. <laughs> I will match the top and I'll match the bottom. Let's do that. So I will do this one here. And I actually do use pins for this because I want to put the pin so that it goes in here, but the pin is not going through my um, gathering. Okay? And then I'm going to put a pin. So remember you've got your seams open. And you're going to match up your sides, your side seam of your garment under your arm and your sleeve. And you're going to put a pin to hold that. And what you actually do is you just, oh yeah, there is a little notch there. It's just very tiny. You actually bring your notches together and you put a pin at the notch. And I always double pin this to hold it. And if you want to, you can put one in between. The more you pin, the easier it gets. And you do the same to the other side. And then you pull up your gathering stitches. So pin to pin. And I'm going to not be able to do it because I haven't got a flatbed. So I need to take my insert out to make a arm so I can put it around my arm. So there's how much fabric I need to gather in. Okay. So now I just bring up my two rows of gathering and I want to only have leave the top ones the underneath ones and it's easing it in and you just go as far as you need to until the fabric fits so it needs to go a little bit more than that like that and the same to the other side and then you can stitch it. So you're stitching with your straight stitch, you're stitching with your 1.5 seam, and you'll get a really nice finish on your sleeve. So it's just a little, I've taken it from a very full sleeve to a very simple basic sleeve. So I just didn't want too much gathers on this particular one. So I've taken most of the gathering out by recutting it because I didn't want a full sleeve on all of them. I wanted them all to be a little bit different. So double pin and just ease those gathers. Now, when you're going to do it on your flat bed, don't go taking everything, um, you know, you don't need to push your machine up, just pop that out like that. Done. And now I have a flat bed. Oh, a couple more pins on this side just to hold it 1.5 seam and then when you're finished you overlock 
you um, pull your gathering threads out and overlock around it and you've got your sleeve finished. So when I'm doing it, I'm going to just push this through and show you. When I'm trialing it, I based the first one. So I based it on and say, oh, am I happy with that? And if I'm happy with that, then I sew it. So I just did a long stitch and basted it on. And now this one can be stitched fully. And then I'm not even going to bother about basting the other one on because I know it works. So I will re-stitch this one and then re-stitch the other one. Now, how are we going for time? I'm just checking because I might need to stop and then start again. No, I'm going to keep going. Okay, so now I can do a fully full, full sew on this sleeve. Sew my other one on. Pull my gathering out and overlock and then that those are both finished and they're ready to hem now for the neck it is a v-neck and like i said i've never worn a v-neck and i thought oh I, don't, I i can't wear a v-neck but because this v-neck is not a low cut i can so you ladies that have a more endowed you can wear a beautiful v-neck i i can't but this one is only a small one so it works for me so it's quite a good pattern and you'll see behind me that I've made a jacket this jacket here I'll pop it up here so you can get a picture of it Whoop. <laughs> and that jacket I have also made out of the linen um, and it's exactly the same design as this one I'm wearing but it is a blown up <laughs> version of the design and obviously in pink and I've teamed it up with grunge for the front band and the pattern is just a very old patchwork jacket pattern which I was never going to make so I thought I would make an unlined jacket um, because I am going to be in a university in Texas and it's going to be very hot so I decided I'd do an unlined jacket. Um, I'll show you the inside of it shortly. Um, and that's what I'm going to take with me. And I know you think it's going to be extremely hot there, but we will be in air conditioning every day. So inside it will be cold. So I have re-stitched my first sleeve and then I just come in and I pull out my gathering stitches and you just pull them like that open that out and the other side oh there's the other side pull that out like that and there should be one more take that out make sure you've got all your gathering stitches out and one more piece there and then I'll just simply overlock that and it'll be all nice and tidy you end up with a lot of threads. Don't throw your threads out. Remember, throw them in your thread holder and then you can do them later. So when you're overlocking around something like this, you need to make sure that your garment... I always do it from this side so I can see. Make sure your garment is right away from you. I'll turn this around so you can see. And just always check that everything's sitting nice and flat. And then push your fabric out of the road. I know it sounds like a simple thing, but I have more than once in my lifetime probably cut part of my garment because I was going too fast and wasn't looking. And then all the way around. Overlockers are incredible. If you don't want to overlock and you don't want an overlock stitch, you can use your pinking shears. So there are no rules, you can do whatever you like. And there we have my sleeve done. So that was my first sleeve. And then this one is ready to sew in. So I always have the gather underneath. So whenever I'm doing it, my flat of my fabric is on the top and my gather is underneath. So I'm not going to base this one because I've already done the other one and it fitted perfectly. So I'll just go straight to the 1.5 needle um, with the needle down. Take my pins out as I go. Make sure you move your fabric around as you sew. 
So a little bit at a time, move your fabric so you don't get any tucks there. A little bit at a time, oops, drop your pin on the floor, move your fabric, needle down, move your fabric. And when you get to the gathering part, oops, just make sure you've got your fabric sitting nice and flat. So your work is sitting flat and I kind of get my finger in here and just give it a little tug and flatten that out as you go. So my fingers are in here actually doing the work. When that lifts up, I'm going to flatten that seam. So I won't have the big full gather on these. It'll be much, much more supple. Subtle. Supple. Subtle. Make sure your work's flat. There. Yeah. So you don't want a big. A lot of people stitch from the other side. I, for some reason, like to stitch from, <laughs> from this side and have my gathers underneath. And it's just the way I've always done it. So if you want to stitch from the other side so you can see what's happening with the gathers, that's absolutely fine. But I like to do it this way. And it seems to always work, so it's not really a problem. Okay, make sure that's... Whoop, I need to just gather that little bit. It didn't quite fit. I must have not put enough pins. That's it. That's better. Make sure it's flat. Take the pins out. Nearly there. And round to the beginning. And make sure both your seams are flat. Right, now the next thing, remember, whoops, cut. Wait, lift, take out. So the next thing is to take out your gathering. Remember, just here and here. Just pull them out. There we are, and then the other side, and the other side. So all of that comes out, and then you overlock around there, okay? Now, so that's my sleeve, and my pockets, and you can see the difference. I've just done a very small little ease into there instead of the big gather. There's a bit of thread. Cut that bit of thread. Right, now the neck band. So there's my neck band there. So whenever you're going to do this, I normally have done this beforehand, but I wanted to show you. So I'm going to be putting a V neck band in here, so I want to stay stitch this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fabric under here and I'm going to put this on 1.5 but I'm going to move my needle position three clicks to the left and I'm going to sew down oh, my needle's unthreaded I'm going to sew down until I get to my point and I'm going to turn and that's going to stay stitch that to stop my neck from stretching at that point Okay, so I'm just going to do that again, just stitch down, come down to the point so that it's going to turn properly, lift my work and it should go right on that 1.5 and it doesn't so I need to do a couple more stitches, one, two, that looks better and turn, as soon as you turn you can see, perfect and then go down. So if I hadn't have done that, when I started to sew it, it could have stretched. So you can see here, I've done my stay stitching down and up. So I can cut into that point if I need to. So the next step is this dress. <laughs> I've got them all in different stages. So I can show you. So I have had to join my facing on this one. So I've actually got a seam there because I didn't have enough fabric. So all you're going to do is you're going to iron your muslin into facing to the back of your facing. And you can see here I've clipped 
just around this edge here. That's the only part I clip. And I can now stitch this onto here. And normally you would not have a join. That would be on the fold, but I did not have enough fabric. And so this one is the very full sleeve. This actually looks really pretty on. So this has got a very full sleeve and it hangs really beautiful. And I'm going to put elastic in this one. So they've all kind of got their own little bit of a look. And I think what I did when I cut this, I must have cut this a little bit too narrow or not allowed to the seam allowance. So what I've had to do, and the reason why I didn't want to stitch it, I wanted to show you, is I have had to... I have had to clip it at the back and I'm having to clip wrong scissors oh, these, these ones. I'm having to do a little clip here here and here and you can see I've already done it on that side so this fits on to here okay because it just didn't fit so I think I didn't cut it quite the right size so that was m me doing it oopsie so don't unpick anything, just fix it by doing some clips. It's amazing what clips will do. Because I've interfaced it, I've made it too stiff, and so I'm having to clip it to fit it in. But that's fine, because it just works. So what the clips do is they open out your fabric so you've got more room. See, like that? So it's actually very, very good. So I can fit this in now. up and just do it in stages and make sure now if it oh I need to do some more if it doesn't then I'd have to undo that shoulder seam but I'm determined that it's going to fit but I like to show you because there's no point in me doing things and not showing you my mistakes now I'll just leave the cream on so this one can go over there and this one can come here So I'm running my foot along the edge. I know I'm doing a 1.5, beg your pardon, that's right, and I'm moving my needle position back. Yep, there we go. So now with this one, I'm just going to be moving my fabric. See, I'm pushing this fabric away as I'm sewing so that that's all going to fit on because Robin cut it wrong. So I'm just helping it fit, rather than having to unpick, because I don't do unpicking much. So it's very handy to have your sew table off at this stage. So when I come down to here, I want to come down to my point, which I'll be clipping into. I'm just going to leave that pin there for a second. And when I come, I'm going to take that pin out, and I'm going to come down to here. I'm going to lift, I'm going to do one stitch across my point, I'm going to lift and I'm going to turn. Okay, so it's nice and tidy. And I will not overlock that. I will use my pinking shears. Okay, I will not overlock around my neck edge because it would just add to bulk that I don't need. And away you go, all the way around. Now you all know about understitching. You can understitch your neckband once you've done your pinking or overlocking. I'm not overlocking it, I'm pinking it. Um, and it makes your seam sit nice and flat. By doing that, you use your number 10 foot. So there's your neck edge. And then you can simply just pink it. And the reason why you want to pink it, because this fabric next to fray, so by doing some pinking, it will stop the fabric from fraying. Just like that, just a little bit. Not, Don't take a big seam in. A little bit at a time. Okay, do that all the way around. Now, fold your seam towards your facing. Okay, so fold your seam towards your facing. And I'll just quickly put the foot on so that you know, you remember what to do, even though I've shown you before, but we all forget if we're not doing it all the time. 
put your number 10 foot on, clear it, so fold your seam towards your facing and under stitching, oh, I'll just unpick it later, I would use pink normally, under stitching is putting your edge stitch foot number 10 down, my needle position is going to be clipped two clips to the right and I will very carefully keep the bar of my edge stitch foot along my fold that I've stitched and I will just make sure I'm separating these and I'm under stitching my neck edge and this makes it sit nice and flat. I'll just do that much to show you. In fact, that cream thread hardly even shows up. So there's, I'll just leave it. <laughs> there's my under stitching and here's my under stitching here. So it's sewn this facing onto here so that when I roll and press it, it will not roll forward. It's such a beauty, and I haven't even pressed it and it's not rolling. It's such a good method. So if I was going to press that now, I would go on to here. And it will sit perfectly and will never ever roll forward. It's just such a nice finish. So that's called under stitching. And I do that on all my neck edges. Look, isn't that brilliant? Show you again. Here. So it's just under stitch there. Okay. Now on the shoulders. Come on, girly. You can come off. On the shoulders of this one. <laughs> I'm just going to show you, so here's my, this is ready to be understitched and then top stitched. All the top stitching I do, I'm not top stitching on my garment, I actually top stitch through my shoulder seam here to hold that facing so it never moves or you can hand, oh, need to put it in the right place, or you can hand stitch it on the inside. So you could, no, oh, just go like that. So you could hand stitch this here, hand stitch this here, so that your seams are all sitting flat, or you can top stitch through there. So whatever you like, I top stitch through there because I'm lazy, I don't hand stitch. So this is ready to be under stitched, and you can see normally there's not a seam there and it sits really nice, but remember, one stitch across your point makes for a perfect finish at your neckline. So it's a really nice dress. It's very, very quick and easy. There's a, a quite a few things to learn, but I think that's what's nice about it. So that is the Julia dress, and I hope you all have a go with it. I think I've got a little bit of sewing to finish. So I will finish these dresses and get them back to work. So when you come in next, you can have a look at them. And when we come back, I'm just going to show you how to make this cute little clip pin cushion.